everybody, this is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report. We're here in Louisiana with Zachary Gray of Wise Wild Adventures, and we're going to be showing you the timber rattlesnake. That's a cane break, but I'll let it slide. Throughout my animal adventures, there have been a few extraordinary wildlife encounters that stand out from the rest and will never be forgotten. Experiences that were so lucky, unexpected, or adrenaline pumping that they have become baked into my personality as a wildlife presenter. Today's video documents one of those rare encounters, and also one of the most charismatic pit vipers in North America. But like any great adventure, it wouldn't have been possible without some help from a friend. All right, I think this thing's on. I stole Ben's camera to film this. I think he's somewhere back there. So basically what we're out here doing, there's this concrete slab out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, this is where we catch canebrake rattlesnakes the most. We've caught some big ones. This is where I filmed my first two huge ones. And I really want to hook Ben up with a canebrake. I'd say there's about a 50% chance of uh, finding a canebrake here. They're not super super easy to find always but then again i don't go looking for them too often so uh, i'm really hoping that we can find him a really big one as it turns out we won the coin flip and it didn't take us more than 20 minutes to spot a massive timber rattlesnake taking refuge from the intense sunlight under a concrete slab and i had the opportunity to present the impressive animal for the camera all right you ready i'm filming all right guys Check it out. Now this is an absolutely beastly timber rattlesnake. Most likely, this is a large, large female. And as you can see, she's probably about five feet long. Now this is definitely the largest venomous snake that I've ever seen in my life and definitely worked with. Uh, in the wild, it's very, very rare to see a snake this large. And this really is an absolutely incredible first timber rattlesnake to find. Now you can see very first off, they're, they're pretty easy to identify. On the back you have those black chevrons, usually on a, a copper to bronze border on the back, very distinctive. It actually looks quite similar to a, a diamondback water snake, although there are some key differences. Now, you've heard it the whole time, but check out that rattle. That is a big rattle, and that is Basically, just layers of dry skin. Well, you're okay. Layers of dry skin that accumulate over time. Now, there's nothing inside it. What actually makes the rattling sound is each of those layers hitting each other. And that produces that warning sound that you hear so commonly in all kinds of different movies. And anytime you think of a rattlesnake, that's what you think of first. Now, gosh, look at the girth of this animal. She is a heavy snake. And that's very similar. All pit vipers usually have quite heavy bodies. And you can see that head is much, much wider than the neck that leads up to it. And that can be a very good identifying feature for these snakes. You have that very large, bulky head. And the reason is, right back there, she actually has the venom glands. So those venom glands rest right in the back of her skull. And when she's ready to strike, she will flip her things forward, they're on a hinge, and squeeze those muscles that are back there that give her that bulk and eject the venom into the prey. Now, as a pit viper, she's much more likely to come out at night to hunt during the day, but these are definitely ambush predators, no matter whether they are hunting during the day or at night. What they'll do is they'll pick a nice, warm place to curl up. Uh, timber rattlesnakes, as you might realize by their name, do quite like uh, forested areas. So they'll curl up maybe in leaf litter and a brush pile, maybe under a piece of cement, and they'll wait for something to walk by. They expend as little energy as possible. You're not gonna see these guys chasing down a mouse or a rat or anything like that. What she will do is sit and wait, and she'll use those heat sensitive pits located in between the eye and the nose to get an infrared readout of her surroundings. So that means anything warm-blooded or any really warm lizard 
uh, she'll detect that and she can just sit back and when she's ready, bam, she'll lunge out, those fangs will flip forward and she'll inject that venom. Now, timber rattlesnake venom is quite potent. Not only are these large snakes that can deliver quite a large dose of venom, they actually combine the hemotoxic venom that's common among mini pit vipers, such as copperheads, with neurotoxic venom, which is more common among things like cobras or coral snakes, the elapids. Now that venom concoction paralyzes prey, uh, and it can also do quite a, bu a bit of damage to humans. All right, let's talk about ecological importance now. Obviously, an animal of this size isn't going to have very many predators. However, they don't start out this beastly. A baby chamber rattlesnake is probably only going to be maybe about eight inches long when it hatches. And at that size, while it does still have a venomous bite, it's going to fall prey to things like birds, opossums, even domestic dogs or cats could potentially make a meal out of a juvenile timber rattlesnake. Now, especially at this size though, it is really important that animals like this are left where they are if you do see them. Uh, because it, timber rattlesnakes actually take about four to five years to reach sexual maturity, which is a really, really long time for a snake. And what that means is, if you take out a large individual like this from the population, you are severely limiting that uh, the nesting population for that year. So these are definitely springtime breeders. Now, their breeding season will vary depending on geographic location. In North Carolina, you're going to see them breeding during late summer, and they'll be uh, having their babies actually the following spring. Uh, but here in, New York, here in Louisiana, they're actually having the birthing season right now. And unlike most non-venomous snakes, like black rat snakes and the Pantherophis genus, these are live bearers, so they'll give birth to a litter of probably anywhere from 8 to 15, I would say, young. Uh, not all of those young will reach maturity. They have a pretty low survival rate. But those that do could turn out to be a beast like this. And my gosh, just look how beautiful that animal is. At this size, once again, they're not going to have any natural predators. However, humans, because they are big snakes and because they are venomous, have a tendency to kill them just because they do have pretty close proximity to people and because they are quite venomous. But there's absolutely no reason to harm these snakes if you do find them in the wild. If you respect their space, they will absolutely respect yours. So while these do prefer undisturbed timber habitats when they're available, timber rattlesnakes are also pretty good urban colonists. You can find these in and around lots of suburban areas throughout the US. And so that makes them possibly the most dangerous type viper in North America just because they do have pretty close proximity to people and because they are quite venomous. But if you do find them at your house, uh, you don't have to kill them. However, also don't feel like you have to leave them around. They are a snake. They do need to be respected. They can be potentially dangerous. But there's lots of people you can reach out to if you find one of these. I mean, especially we were just talking with Zach, one at this size would be quite valuable to many zoological facilities who would love to display an animal like this. Uh, but there's plenty of animal rehab centers and rescue centers that would come and collect that timber rattlesnake uh, if you do not want it on your land and, and you're scared for your safety or the safety of your pets or your children. But guys, just, I mean, it is so rare to see one of these snakes at this size in the wild. This has been a really incredible experience. They're really quite gorgeous animals. Uh, and as you can see, even though she could do quite a bit of harm to me, she's been absolutely perfect to film with. She hasn't struck once. She's been very relaxed this entire time. And I feel so lucky to have had the opportunity to bring this beautiful creature in front of a camera for you. And we'll get her right back under that slab where we found her. And I bet she'll shed and then have some babies. All right, guys, let's get this beautiful animal right back where she belongs. And as soon as she smells that smell of her den, she should go right back under without hesitation. That was awesome. All right. That was the best. That thing was enormous. That Dude, was ridiculous. That's the, biggest that's the biggest. I'm, I'm telling you, God loves you this week. I know. That's the biggest venomous snake I've ever seen. That was bigger than the one we had in captivity. And we were like, oh yeah, that's the biggest timber that is probably in captivity anywhere. Look at that thing. That thing was huge. 
I know my dad said it might have been bigger. I think the male that we caught that day was bigger, but really? the rattle on that? Yeah, that thing was beautiful. Just, yes. I know we caught the beast. Well, everyone, that's just about it for today's adventure. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the timber rattlesnake. If you did enjoy, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content coming every other Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.